Hello viewers, my name is Eric and today I will attempt to um, introduce you to my uh, design, this design, which is my attempt at making a, uh, at designing a single seater uh, VTOL aircraft, basically. And there may be some, uh, well, I'm, I may, may not be very good at explaining this, and as you can see, I made this in Google SketchUp. So it is, well, it is sort of detailed-ish. On the other hand, it's not detailed at all. Anyway, I, I suppose let's get started. So firstly, I designed this, uh, as you can see, I designed this uh, VTOL with a, a boxed wing design. Uh, not because it's cool, but because... Um, not only does it pr provide the uh, regular functions of control surfaces, but it also sort of balances out the um, center of mass to the rear a little, which is, while it is uh, un undesirable in normal aircraft, it is des desirable here because as um, my uh, primary engines, these engines, this is my... Uh, the uh, engines... I've decided, well not really since I don't have any clue about how jet engines actually work, but these are supposed to be two uh, dual jet engines. The uh, lower one is supposed to be a um, high thrust uh, engine configured for low altitudes, and then the top engine is supposed to be for be the cruise engines that uh, for a more economical cru cruise, and both engines are activated c together whenever you need some higher speeds. So basically the bottom engine is also the VTOL engine. And um, I've tried to uh, design, uh, model this in SketchUp so it's not very flexible and I haven't, plus I haven't learned any of the animations re relating to SketchUp yet. However, I did make all the parts in separate uh, components. So I could move them around to demonstrate what how they work but first let's um, get into some x-ray views to, so we can see what's on the inside and let me also turn on the edges uh, I suppose profiles will do okay okay so as you can see here the uh, the engines are on a simple I suppose simple a uh, hinge which uh, which rotates basically for VTOL as well as uh, uh, STOL operations. So it rotates ar uh, along this part. And um, we also have gears. Of course, I'm not working out the actual mechanics of the gears. I just suppose some real engineers can make this work if something similar to this actually comes into production. So we have the uh, rear uh rear ge gears uh here and this of course is a uh, i suppose it's a three wheel config configuration and as you can see the uh wings are not very they, they don't have a very uh large wingspan in fact from left to right it's about three meters three meters so it's designed to be a very compact aircraft for uh, VTOL operations Hopefully, um, with the large amount of c control surfaces as well as these large flaps, as well as this frontal flap, I'm hoping that this this could sort of be more of a um, like a highly maneuverable uh, aircraft. And in the rear here, we have two uh, two modular thingies. These could be, I suppose, these could be either batteries or fuel tanks, but they'll most likely be fuel tanks which you can just attach onto the back of the aircraft and I originally tried to design this air intake to be closable so that um, when you are not using the bottom engine uh, the aircraft could uh, produce slightly less drag but I don't think this is working very well <laughs> so yeah so of course here are lights and as for the cockpit, I didn't pay too much attention to it, but as you can see, I've sort of modeled out the pedals and the um, yoke, as well as these two sticks. I'm not sure all of those are necessary for 
controlling the aircraft, but it's pretty much a single seater. What I envision this thing could be used for is uh, low altitude reconnaissance, as well as sort of like a light support infantry thingy. Matt, since it's really small, it's really small of a target, so it should be harder to hit. And I suppose you could sort of mount like a, uh, for example, a some kind of gun at the front, or uh, or like basically missiles in the bottom. Like I suppose you could put missiles right here beneath the wings. And yeah, also we do have this uh, this this uh, elevator here to direct the um, aircraft. So for for uh, yaw control, we have uh, both this rudder as well as these two rudders on the boxed wing. For um, for for pitch controls, we have these flaps as well as these frontal flaps for flaps for for increased wing wing surface lift thingy and for the uh, cockpit the uh, front uh, the window the uh, I don't know what you call it is basically it's hinged on this so basically basically opens like this and of course uh, I'm not actually an engineer so this is just how I envision this thing to work and as for th the fuel I suppose this thing would sort of be a really short range aircraft. That's that would be be its only downside. I mean, obviously, which with uh, such large engines, you could just run them at a very low thrust, and they could use up less fuel. And since jet engines are in general when they are optimized, like if something, I read this article about how if you optimize a jet engine for low altitude, it could be more efficient than a propeller at low altitude. So. Uh, basically we have uh so this could actually work in low altitudes and be efficient in it but i suppose it would also have a much lower amount of flight time and it definitely cannot make use of electric electric power so fuel tanks this is the red uh box is a fuel tank and uh of course the rear the, these two modules are fuel tanks and i suppose the uh Actually, I have a very poor understanding of how helicopters work, so I don't know exactly how VTOL will will happen. But I suppose that even if this thing can't do VTOL, the lead, it it could definitely do uh, STOL, uh, short takeoff and landings, because once you uh, tilt the engine downwards, you basically provide it with a lot of lift, and you could basically just cruise down downwards, I suppose. So, it should be it should be able to do SOL if this is somehow gimbaled. For example, if there are like flaps at the end of the engine that uh, direct the f uh, thrust and gimbal it, ish. And also, when um, the engine is rotated downwards, uh, I suppose this opening on the top could also pr provide some drag to add act as some kind of speed brake, although I'm not sure how good that'll work. And just to demonstrate how it looks with uh, in its landed configuration, like such as with the gear open, etc. The, the frontal gear, currently since I don't know how to model anything else, so for now I've modeled it to open like this, and then of course the gear just rotates out like this. Oops. Well, the gear. Yeah, uh, I think. Hold on. Let me just do this again. Hmm. I suppose this is fine. Nope. Uh. Yep, this is fine. So it opens up diagonally like this, in which, uh, let me just turn off the uh, transparency for a second. Uh, where is transparency? Yep, x-ray. So uh, once the wheels come down, oh yeah, let me turn back. 
on the x-ray vision again because all right let me just find the right spot All right, so it's gonna be—it's not gonna be totally perfect. <laughs> In fact, it is not totally perfect. And I'll let me just. Uh, In fact, let me just enter the edit window of this thing. All right, now we can do this. Fuck. Um, hold on. Yep, now we can do this. I think once I find the center of this thing, yep, right here. And then, let me just rotate it this way. And now, yep, so this opens out like this. And then for the rear gears, uh, again, these rotate upon about this hinge here. Yep, nice and easy. And then the wheels. Rotate 90 degrees. Again, I have to select the entire thing. And yeah. So that's one of the problems of not preparing the animations or even learning animations beforehand. So, anyway, this is basically how it looks when it's, uh, Extended and of course, let's open up the canopy. Yeah, the canopy Which is what I've been trying to say as you can tell I'm totally not prepared This is sort of like like modeling these things in SketchUp. is sort of like my hobby because It's easy SketchUp is really easy. However, it's also not as Professional I suppose so this is how it looks when it's landed and we have these lights Which I suppose you could also put machine guns or whatever here and we also have lights, like headlights for some reason. And it's the color scheme is of course entirely in green because we want camouflage. And that's I suppose it for this introduction. I'm not sure what else I can do to uh, talk about this. The wings of course are not entirely as they would be on the real thing since I'm just really modeling them very simplistic uh, sim 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 simply. And uh yeah, this could also, again, this should be able to take off with the canopy open, so if the guy actually has, like, a some kind of handheld weapons, you could just shoot it from the, what, yeah, anyway. So, in conclusion, uh, this is my attempt, attempt at designing the uh, concept for a, uh, for a single-seater SDOL, ultralight SDOL. Or and VTOL, which which has VTOL capabilities and is supposed to go quite fast since it's it's co uh, easily um, a an aircraft when you um, turn the engine back into the default configuration with both the engines running it should be going quite fast and it has like this cool really cool box wing design and um, I would uh, I suppose uh, you could use this. I will provide a link for the model in the description in, in the description and you could use this model for like whatever you want for example a uh, game with aircraft or a a animation or I suppose if you could even make it work on a, a flight simulator like that would be awesome but as <laughs> you you probably don't want this but it is still I think it is a good concept but a bad model I suppose that's what I'm trying to say and um, if you do use it in a in any project at all uh, you feel free to use it but credit me my name is Eric Yan and also um, also inform me like just uh, get send me a PM or something so that's it with this uh, model and wait, wait wait let's just compare this to the uh, ergonomic lady here so, um, as you can see, compared to a 
human being this uh, this really is just like the size of a it's a bit it's a bit wider of course than your average uh, car but otherwise it's it's really just about the same size as a sedan or something so it is really small it should be able to fit in a garage um, and uh, feel free to leave any comments or suggestions in the comments which I will read since I'm not like one of those famous <laughs> youtubers that like have too many comments that they can't read any so yeah I I like any suggestions you have and um or any comments and I look f hopefully this video was somewhat useful or entertaining again oh yeah there's also this cross section in which you can clearly see this is a seat we could also put fuel here there isn't much space for uh, personal belongings I suppose this is more of a, a personal transport more than a general for uh, transport transport so yeah that's about it thanks for watching and leave a comment